Come on over. I don't hear the water running, and I'm assuming that you don't either. <sighs> well guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion, and you are watching Reptiliatus. In today's video, we are going to be troubleshooting a problem. You see, I came into the reptile room today, and I couldn't help but notice that I didn't hear water trickling from the crocodile skink enclosure. For those of you that don't know, I own a pair of red-eyed crocodile skinks. T. gracilis, and their enclosure has a paludarium-like water feature. The body of water in the enclosure is filtered by a small power filter. And yeah, so I came into the room and noticed that it's not working. I tried to troubleshoot it, tried taking the propeller out, making sure everything's working. It's buzzing, making a lot of noise, not working. So, today, we are addressing the fact that sometimes, when you own animals, there are costs that suddenly appear that you weren't expecting. This filter was not that old, maybe a year, and it crapped out on me. Fortunately, I have another one handy. I have this uh, Aquion Quiet Flow here, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace it today and have a look at the crocodile skinks. But yeah. Things go wrong sometimes, and you have to be quick on your feet to address the issue, whether it's replacing the broken bulbs, um, sudden illness that you have to address by taking your animal to the vets. There are a lot of hidden costs that suddenly appear, and so it's always a good idea to keep in mind that you might want to have some money put aside to take care of your animals if these sudden needs to uh, spend money on your pets arise. You know, you think you have everything set up, everything's running smooth, Suddenly something happens, you're having to spend $100, $50, $20, whatever it is. So just be prepared for that. As always, I want to welcome everybody to my channel. If you enjoy watching videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, invertebrates, then definitely consider subscribing down below. And don't forget to ding the notification bell afterwards to know when my next video comes out. I post a few times a week and I think you'll enjoy the content. All right, let's get into it. Take a look at the enclosure and replace that filter. All right guys, so we can see the problem right away back there. The marina filter is kaput, not working. Um, but otherwise, the enclosure is looking interesting. Things have kind of settled in, you could say. Uh, the baby tears back there are just taking over. And I noticed that Sunny and Sappy have been digging out under it and they'll like, hide between the wood here and there but they've also dug out an area under this log and actually you can see right here i think that's sappy who's just hanging out right at the mouth of a tunnel that leads under the driftwood but yeah so why don't we try feeding these guys a little bit and then right after that we're gonna get all invasive in there and <laughs> get that filter out and replace it. Probably also top the water off. I did add some uh, tannin water recently, but uh, yeah, things in there otherwise are looking okay. Lots of duckweed spreading and growing. The pothos is really anchoring itself in there, which will help remove a lot of the nitrates and nitrites. But uh, we need to get that filter running again. That water cannot just stay stagnant. It's not a good idea. It'll produce a lot of anaerobic bacteria as they keep defecating and uh, actually shedding in there. As you can see, they always go into the water to shed. There's a bunch of shedding there under the duckweed. So, yes, all in all, we need to get this water flowing again. Let's go ahead and feed our little friends first. Do you want a superworm? Uh-huh. Hello. Are you gonna come out? That's what I thought. Sorry about the shaky camera, guys. She hasn't had one of these in a while. But don't run away. <laughs> They're still kind of shy in this enclosure. Oh, that's great. Sappy. Come on over. That's my girl. There you go. Oh. Uh, it's funny because then Sonny is just in here, but he doesn't want to come out for the life of him. I tried to put some food out there. He has no interest in coming out. 
But that's okay. We'll put some crickets in later. But yeah, here you go. You can see the filter and it is just not looking too hot. I mean, I've unplugged it at this point because the motor was just screaming, but we'll get this out of here and start sorting things out. All right, so I've just taken a container here that I'm gonna drop the filter in because it's still gonna have water in the bottom part of it. It's kind of messy. Okay, let me just try and get a bit of this duckweed off. Rather it stay in the enclosure. Okay, this I will put behind for now. I'll get it to come around. And that filter is out of the way. Perfect, now let's get our new filter in there. All right, so this filter is a lot larger than the last one, which means that we're gonna have to rescape one side of the water area. So I'll have to move this piece of wood over there. All right, so first things first, let's just kind of clear this space. Ooh, and I can already smell the water. It has some serious odor. So we definitely want to get that filter in there. All right. So here comes the filter. Like I said, fairly large. It's gonna do a good job keeping things cleaner. I should be able to take this piece of wood here. And that should be fine. Now, where do we want this pothos? Let's place these things strategically, you see. All right guys, so I managed to move a bunch of the pothos around. I reoriented the log here and our filter is in place. Now we need to just make sure everybody's good on this side. I think I saw Sunny run off somewhere here, but Sappy's under the log. Oh yeah, there's Sunny, he's just over there. So what we're gonna do now is pour a bit more water into here because we have some room to work with with our drainage layer. Water level sitting about there. We can go a little higher. We obviously don't want it to go above the egg crate because that will saturate the substrate. But yeah, we do have some room to play with. I'm gonna to top it off as much as we can before having this filter run. All right, we're gonna try turning it on now and uh, cross our fingers. Here goes. Awesome. All right, so it's clearly running now, but I think it's running a little dry because there's some noise. So we're gonna wanna add some more water again to the enclosure and uh, see if that makes a difference. Also, I'm thinking I'm gonna move that driftwood directly under the stream to help break some of the splashy noise because we really don't want that much noise. And also, Stop being so cute. I see you there. Okay, let's try that out. All right guys, so I went and collected some more water. Just gonna pour it in now. Seems to have already helped things a bit. Add a little more here. Now normally I would try to have this all come down on something like that. Doesn't really matter right now because everything in that bottom is a mess as is, so it'll settle the way it needs to settle soon. But I guess pouring it on this pothos leaf wasn't such a bad idea. Beautiful. Look at that. All right, let's see if we can get that driftwood directly under the filter's flow. Okay. Does this make anything better or simply worse? We're about to find out.
Well guys, there you go. I think that made a big difference. The sound is a lot less intense now that it's pouring over the wood. I moved a bit of the java moss over there. So it's kind of gonna stay out of the water and in the water and hopefully that'll keep it wet so it can start to, you know, adapt and grow up the wood. It'd be kind of cool. And uh, everything else is looking good. Funny, look at all those springtails floating around on the surface, bouncing around. It's kind of wholesome. They've really colonized this enclosure just in the last few weeks that it's been running and up and growing. But yeah, just let's uh, have a quick look-see here. Do a quick pan. You can see the enclosure is doing great. One of the crocodile skinks is right there. Man, I love these animals. They're just incredible. There's a lot more cover growing in, so they've become more bold, that's for sure. But still, uh, they'd be a lot happier with more cover. But it is it is definitely a huge improvement from before. Let's see if they want another super worm. Would you like a super worm? Maybe? No? Oh, sure. Sure. Let's just... Get over here. Come on. Woo. The creature went back into the dark. Eating with superworm and privacy. Water's already getting a little less cloudy, but over time, this should all look just fine. Yeah, should be good. Well guys, there you have it. Thank goodness we were able to replace the filter in the enclosure and get things running the way they're supposed to be again. The animals are probably gonna appreciate that a lot. I know I am. So let's go ahead and congratulate them on their new beautiful filter by giving them a thumbs up. Anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's just another day in the reptile room. Things go wrong sometimes. You just gotta be on top of your feet, making sure that all your animals are okay. Everything's running smooth. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've ever had something crap out on you for one of your animals. Was it a bulb that burnt out? Was it a filter that stopped working like me? Heat pads, heat tape that gave you a heart attack and maybe burnt or burnt out? Doors on enclosures, you name it. Who knows what kind of things you've had happen. Let me know in the comment section down below. I wanna hear your stories. And as always, I will give your comment a heart. And don't forget to check out my other social medias. I listed them at the start of the video. I'll list them once more again. And check out these other videos if you like crocodile skinks. I'll link a few up here. So without further ado, once more, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Have a great week.